Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. So it is the end of May and that means it's time for another garden tour. And I am in my front yard this evening and it is looking beautiful and it is smelling beautiful. Oh my goodness. This star jasmine is in full bloom and it is just smelling incredible right now. I wish this guy would bloom all year long. I'd be so happy with it, but I'll enjoy it for a while it lasts. So this month was kind of a little different. My family and I I went on a vacation this month and we just got back a couple days ago so of course the garden is not how I want it to be it's not um, you know perfectly weeded or perfectly deadheaded or anything like that but that is not the point of these monthly garden tours on my channel the point of these garden tours is just to show you all and to show myself what my garden looks like every month of the year I want to do one garden tour every month of the year so that I can see all the way from December from previous year all the way through December of this year and I just want to see the progress that my garden has over the year and so I can reflect back on it and see what worked see what didn't see what was blooming when um, and I have to say this has been so beneficial. It's only May and I am so happy that I am doing these because it's so wonderful to see the difference month to month and it makes me feel really good about all the work I've been putting into my garden. So I would encourage all of you to pick up your phones. Doesn't matter if you're a YouTuber or an Instagrammer, just pick up your phones and take a video of your garden every month and then you can really see the difference. You know, and then in the dead of winter when nothing's blooming, you can look back in May in June whenever and you can reflect on what you did so I would really encourage you guys to do that I'm really enjoying it so far and like I said it's only May so let me get started and showing you guys um, my garden just as a kind of a little background um, I live in Northern California a small town called Davis that's just outside of Sacramento it is zone 9b like i said it's the end of may right now and we just consider this summer we're in the 90s right now we're getting to the hundreds next week we're getting to 102 so this is this is it we're in go time right now everything all the the plants are in full swing and um we're we're really enjoying it and i think the plants are enjoying it as well i do have a couple things that i need to kind of work on a little bit um i think i need to bump up some of the watering in some areas of course i have some problem areas and i'll show you guys that but that's how it is in all the gardens um, you know that's completely normal I don't think there's any garden where there's there's everything is working perfectly all at the same time if there was I would like to talk to the gardener <laughs> all right so let me get you guys started I'm gonna start with the annuals in my front swoop because they're looking gorgeous Okay, so we will get started here. This is kind of the corner of my house. My house is on a street corner, so I kind of think of this as the front of my house instead of face on. So my house faces north, so then this would be northeast. And this whole area I consider to be full sun, except for right up by the house over there, obviously underneath that what do you call it a portico or something like that and then underneath this crepe myrtle tree that's all um part shade to part sun you know partial basically is what I would say but this front swoop I call my annual swoop um, and it I, I like to save this spot for annuals and you can see why I put these annuals from proven winners in less than a month ago and they look incredible I'll do a before and after shot from the day I put them in until today and they are looking so beautiful so the hot pink one well really it's like a I don't know, it's like a purpley magenta type thing. Um, that is called Supertunia Vista Jazzberry and it is looking gorgeous. And they have probably tripled in size, maybe quadrupled in size since I put them in and they're gonna get huge. I put Supertunia Vista Bubblegum in here last year and the year before and they got so big, they were spilling over the sidewalk and I had to keep trimming them back to, to make sure that people had room to walk by. So absolutely incredible. Right now, the star of the show is this uh, Sweet Alyssum Snow Princess Lobularia. Look at how big it is. So obviously these all started in four inch pots and look at how big the Sweet Alyssum is getting. Even even compared to the Supertunia Vista Jazzberry. It's crazy, it's beautiful. I'm so glad I did that. Um, in previous years, I've only done one, like the Supertunia Vista Bubblegum, and this is the first year that I've put different things in to see how they do. And so far, I'm really liking the combination. 
The green plant right here is an Ipomoea or a sweet potato vine, and it is sweet Caroline sweetheart lime sweet potato vine. <laughs> That's quite a mouthful. It's struggling just the littlest bit, and I think it's mostly because I do have earwigs and slugs. It's getting to the point where it's so hot now that they're going to be fine, um, but I did put some sluggo down just to kind of deal with them, um, but they're, they're going to be totally fine. I'm not worried about it at all. So I do fertilize these with... Uh, the Proven Winners Water Soluble Fertilizer once a week. I'm due for fertilizing tomorrow. Today's Sunday. Um, and I fertilize every Monday and I think it just makes such a difference. I am so happy with them. Um, I'm not even bothering to put in more mulch to cover up you know, to replenish the mulch because I know in probably two weeks or three weeks, they're all there. You're not going to be able to see any of the mulch. So I'm really excited about this swoop. I think it looks so fantastic. And I kind of think of this as like the, the focal point of my yard and I absolutely love it. All right. So kind of spanning this way. All right, so we'll start off over here in this part of my garden. This is still a full sun uh, part of my garden. Even though we do have the crepe myrtle tree right there, it still gets plenty of sun. And you can see I've just kind of jammed everything in here. I have a very small garden. It's about a sixth of an acre. So I do my best and I try and fit as much as I can in it. Um, and that includes planting things closer than I probably should, and then also continually changing things out. If I don't like something, I will take it out and I will I will plant something else and not really feel too bad about it. So right here, these are Shasta daisies in full bloom. They're looking gorgeous. Um, this was actually only two plants, maybe three, one, two right there, and then I have more on the other side of my lawn. I actually got these at Lowe's. I got them when Lowe's had their perennial sale, three for $10. Um, I do not think they are, gosh, what is the name of the most popular Shasta Daisy. I'll put it, I'll put it on here. I do not think they're those because they're much shorter than those. Um, I think these are called snow caps. I don't know because it didn't say, it just said Shasta Daisies when I bought them but they perform just like the snowcap variety and that's what I think they are. And I love them and I wanna keep them. I do come in here and I deadhead them, you know, kind of like when they get to this stage, I will just go ahead and I will cut that, pop it off um, and it's, uh, uh, it keeps them blooming for a lot longer. Um, right here, these are some liatris bulbs. They haven't quite started blooming yet, but they're almost, I see one over there that's kind of starting to bloom. And then at the same time, I planted some glads and those are looking pretty. They're kind of going a little crazy, honestly, <laughs> but, but they're looking very pretty. Again, you can see I just stuffed everything in, um, but it's looking great. Okay, right here, I have some Superbina Sparkling Amethyst from Proven Winners. This is actually like two years old, um, and I just kind of threw it in there. I had maybe two or three plants, I think only two plants right there, um, and it just keeps coming back, and I love it, and I think it's beautiful. More liatris right there. And then along my walk right here, I have lemon coral sedum again from Proven Winners. Um, Proven Winners is my favorite plant brand and they were so sweet. They offered to give me some of their annuals and actually some of their 2023, um, uh, plants to try out this year as well. So I'm super excited to have all of those. They also, um, let me try out all of these and to see how they would do in my zone 9B yard. So thank you to Proven Winners for those. So these are lemon coral sedum. They are doing really well. I love them. I think they're gorgeous. They do get these little yellow blooms that I'm not a total fan of, but I think that it's just something in my, in my last garden tour, I was debating taking them out and putting something else in. Um, but you know, even when I was editing that video, I thought, what am I talking about? I love this here. I love how it just kind of, it's like a shining light up to my front door. I absolutely love it. I think it's gorgeous and I'm planning to keep it. So over here, um, I have my foxgloves. This was the Camelot mix and they are bloomed out and they are done. I think I'm going to leave the plants there. They are biannuals. However, the Camelot mix blooms first year. So I just planted these in the fall of last year. So for cool flower method, they bloomed this year. And then I think I'll leave them and let them bloom next year because they'll probably be massive next year. I won't, I won't go through every single plant because it will be, this will be two hour long video, but I'll just kind of point out my favorites. This is my favorite. <laughs> this is some Mystic Spires 
Mystic Spire's Blue Salvia. Oh my goodness. If you all live in a hot zone like I do, you need this plant. I absolutely love it. I have a ton of it in my garden. It is probably one of my favorite. It's the pollinator's favorites. I see butterflies, hummingbirds, bees on it all the time. I absolutely love this plant. Um, so I would totally recommend that one. Moving up here, we have Superbina Whiteout, this mass. <laughs> it's looking absolutely gorgeous. And then right here is a Limelight Hydrangea that is just about to bloom. So this plant, this one right here, and then that one over there, these two are in full sun. They are limelight hydrangeas that are in full sun. And that is pushing it. That is pushing it for zone 9B and our heat and everything like that. Now this one, gorgeous, beautiful, so happy. You know, it's loving its life right now, so I'm not worried about it. That one over there is struggling, but I don't think it's because of the sun, because the star jasmine is struggling over there. I'll show you guys when we get over there. Um, right here all along this black fence is my dahlia patch or one of my dahlia patches all along i think i have like 17 dahlias right here all of them have come up except for three and one of them cafe au lait franz kafka and then one more i think this is white perfection over here white perfection yeah those three didn't come up and you know Everyone said, oh, just wait, just give it time, it'll be fine. Um, I don't know, I, I kind of feel like they should be up by now and I don't want a huge gap right there like that. So I'm tempted to just literally go to the store and find and see if I can find a cafe au lait that's already grown. <laughs> I know that's cheating, but I just don't want a big gap like that. You know, this is, this is gonna be dahlias all along this fence and you do have to stake your dahlias. And so my plan is, is to stake them to this fence. And I think it'll be perfect and I think it'll look beautiful. Um, but again, I don't want a gap. So that's one of my, I, I don't wanna call it a fail yet because I don't think I've totally failed yet, but um, that's something I need to look at. Right over here, just off to the left, this is my patch of uh, bubblegum pink gladiolas from the dollar store. Yes, from the dollar store. <laughs> so I just a couple years ago, I found gladiolas at the dollar store and I thought, oh, my goodness, that's crazy. So I got them. I didn't really have any plans for them. Um, you know, I, I didn't expect much from them, but they were gorgeous last year. I'll try and find a picture. I think I have a picture of my daughter. She was picking some of them. Um, and then this year, obviously, they've totally, totally multiplied. And we even covered a bunch of them when we put in the stepping stone pathway. So there would have been even more of them. So they are doing, they are so happy. They're beautiful. And I'm really excited about them to bloom. So this month for Mother's Day, I did have a Verbena de la Mina right here that was gorgeous and the pollinators absolutely loved it, but it was like dying. It was like all woody on the inside and I really think it was my fault. I didn't do a good job pruning it. So I took that out. I did take cuttings of it and the cuttings are doing really well. So hopefully I can replant that in another spot, but I ended up giving, getting this privet, um, this Texas privet to replace it. And I really like it. I really like the structure and I know when I I say structure it's like what because it is a total mess right now I need to prune it so bad um, but we put this in right before we left on our vacation and I wanted to let it kind of sit and and you know root in before I started hacking at it and um, and pruning it so that's my plan I'm going to do that in the next week or two except for it's going to get like 100 degrees this next week so I don't know I will get to that but my plan is is to prune that into kind of like a pyramid shape um, and then all around that I did put in this salvia I'm going to say it wrong salvia numerosa and this is caradonna variety and the reason why I got these let's see if it'll focus there we is um, I went on a garden tour of our town of these gorgeous, gorgeous gardens in our town and they all had this plant and they were all big and, and like basically round balls of purple and they were gorgeous and I had to have them. So I think those will look really pretty um, bordering this walkway. All right, so turning back around, this is my crepe myrtle garden bed. And let me just show you guys the crepe myrtle. It is all flushed out, 
but it has not started blooming yet. Um, but it will very soon. And you guys have to see it when it blooms. It's absolutely gorgeous. So this is the crepe myrtle garden bed. It gets morning sun. Well, okay. This side gets morning sun. This side gets afternoon sun. And, and what I plant on each side depends on that. I have to plant really hardy, strong things that can handle the sun over on this side. And then I can put, plant more delicate things over here on this side. So over here, I have foxtail ferns. They are super happy. Um, I do have foxgloves dotted all around over on this side, and obviously I've cut them back. Right here, I'm very proud of this plant. This is White Wands Veronica. Um, and this is only to a zone eight and I'm a zone nine B. And I love pushing and seeing what I can do and seeing what plant I can get to grow if I kind of baby it a little bit. So this gets morning sun, really good, healthy, strong morning sun. And then it's shaded the rest of the, uh, the rest of the day, like the strong part of the day. And then even in the evening. And I think that that is just perfect for this Veronica to be happy enough and you can see how beautiful it is blooming. So I'm super, super excited about that. Um, Proven Winners did send, well, Walter's Garden sent me um, another Veronica that I'm going to plant right next to this and see how it does. And again, that's only to a zone eight. So I'm going to see if I can kind of push it a little bit and see what I can do and see if we can, you know, kind of fudge the zones just a little bit. Okay, over here I have my calla lilies. They're about done blooming, but oh my goodness, they got so huge this year. <laughs> it started off as one plant. When I first moved into this house, I found this plant over on the side of my house. I divided it into two and then I planted them here and now they're crazy. <laughs> now I think I have to divide them again, um, but they are just, they're not even supposed to be there. I have a ring of bobo hydrangeas around the crepe myrtle. Let's see if you can see it there. It's like hiding back there. So at some point I'm going to have to move these into a different place, but they are just so, so happy. They have like quadrupled in size and they are just loving their life right now. So, uh it's hard to move something that's loving its life. I did want to show you guys my bobo. Look at this. It's variegated. Isn't that funny? So these bobos I put in, I have five. One, two, three, four, five five hidden behind there. Um, these I put in last year, so they're very young. They're very small. Um, but my goal is to kind of have this big ring of hydrangeas around there. And again, we'll see if it can handle it because this is hot afternoon sun and maybe on, on this side, it's maybe not enough sun for it. So I kind of just have to play around with it. That's kind of what you have to do with tough garden beds like this, um, where it's not like one specific um, amount of sun and it kind of changes and especially changes if uh, the tree is flushed out or not, you know, you kind of just have to play with it. And I do not mind um, planting things and seeing how they do and then obviously moving them if they need to be moved. All right, and then over here is the really hot side. Again, I have another Mystic Spires Blue Salvia that's doing fantastic. It gets way more shade than the other one, but obviously it's blooming just as much. Um, I have a new look, Dusty Miller. I actually got this from Seed from um, Florette, but unfortunately I don't think she sells this seed anymore, but I really, really like it. It's, it's absolutely crazy, but I love using this in um, my cut flower arrangements. It's a really, really pretty filler. And then this is embarrassing. You'll see my geranium needs to be deadheaded so bad, but I figured I might as well show you and then shame myself into getting out here and deadheading it. Over here, I just snuck in some more uh, cut flowers. This is Blue Planet Adjuratum. Adger Adjuratum can see it's starting to bloom right there. So this is another tough spot where it gets shade almost to about here and then it does get some afternoon sun in here so it's it's kind of um blurring the lines a little bit right I don't even know what to say how much shade or sun it is because it's just kind of all over the place so we're going to see how it does so far these three are super happy and then these back here are struggling a little bit um but that's okay we'll see how it does Okay, moving up here in through the gate. One of the things that I did this month is I redid my flower box right here. 
and it is getting dark fast you guys i'm sorry i tried to get golden hour but it's hard to do it in that amount of time <laughs> okay so here's my flower box by my front door um i was growing some begonias from bulbs to put out here and some caladiums but they were just taking forever i don't know what the problem was so i caved i somehow ended up at the plant store and i bought these gorgeous begonias. These are Riger begonias. If you guys ever see these at your plant store, get them. They are so beautiful. This gets like a minute of morning sun and that's about it. And they just do fantastic. Then I have purple bacopa underneath there. And then I also have, um, oh, I'm blanking on the name, uh, silver falls, dichondra silver falls. So that's going to get really low and I'm going to have to give it haircuts um, you know, kind of as the season goes on, but I don't care. I think it's gorgeous. And then right here in this flower bed, this is the flower bed that I'm deciding to do kind of my hosta bed. You can see one of them got attacked when I was on vacation, but I'm planning to do a whole bunch of different colors of hosta here. And I know that it's going to be way too big and it's going to go crazy, but at least I'm going to start them here and, and kind of see how they do. And so far, I'm really liking the look of all different colors of green. So this whole flower bed is new. I haven't even shown you all this yet. Um, and the reason for that is because this flower bed came to pass because I was trying to clear out my greenhouse as fast as I possibly could before we left on vacation. So it was going to get really hot. It was going to get in the hundreds when we were on vacation. And I knew these plants were not going to survive in the greenhouse. It was just going to bake everything. So that's how these plants ended up here. Uh, over here, I have three ladies mantles that I actually got from um, Annie's Annuals. And I think that they'll be very happy there next to the hostas. Um, and then right here, I have surefire Fire Rose Begonia from Proven Winners. And I actually had these in my window box right over here last year. And I probably could have left them in the window, bo window box over winter just because it is a, a protected spot. These are zone 10. Um, but I wanted to take them out because I didn't want them in there to, over Christmas and stuff like that. Um, so I just stuck them in my greenhouse and they're totally happy and they're thriving and they're already starting to bloom and they've only been in for about a week and a half. And then right next to that is one of my favorite plants at this time, um, and that is common heliotrope. And again, this is another plant. If you guys could smell it, you would run out and you would purchase it. So I'm actually really happy about these because this is another zone 10 plant. And um, I saw this for the first time when I was in Carmel, which is closer to the coast. So obviously it's a more mild climate than my climate. Um, and I so I purchased them planning, you know, okay, okay, we're going to push it. We're going to see if I can get away with it. And I thought they had completely died back after a frost that we had this past winter. They were like brown and I thought, okay, well, that's it. They're done. And look at them now. They're perfectly happy and they smell so good and I absolutely love them. I also have them over here in this little trio of pots that you can't even see the pots because they're completely taken over, but you can see those right here. These are new as of maybe like two months ago. And then again, another another one of my favorite plants, um, Mystic Spires Blue. And then you can see there's more <laughs> all the way there. This garden bed right here. Oh, first I have to show you guys. Look at this plant. So this is called Tiny Tough Stuff mountain hydrangea do you see the blue hydrangeas <laughs> so i am so proud of this plant because we do have high ph here and i have been putting soil acidifier on this plant i've only done it maybe two or three times this year but look at this blueness <laughs> so the reason why i wanted this plant is because i heard i heard through the grapevine that this is the the hydrangea that's most likely to stay blue even in higher ph Am I saying that right? Hi yeah, higher pH, not lower pH. So more alkaline soil. So I thought, okay, perfect. Let me try it and let me see if I can keep it stained blue because I really like blue hydrangeas. And it is totally stained blue. So I'm super excited about this plant. I can't wait till it gets nice and full and big and um, and see what it does. This is on the north side of my house, so it maybe it gets a couple minutes of morning sun, but I'm talking like minutes. It is mostly full shade, as is most of this garden bed right here. 
All right, and then swinging back over to the left side again. Here I have my annual Dianthus that's been in here and I've been debating on taking it out or leaving it in or taking it out or leaving it in. It's going out of bloom right now, so now I'm leaning towards taking it out. <laughs> so a lot of you all gave me really good suggestions in putting it in my cottage garden that's over on that side of my house and I think that that is a fantastic suggestion. I kind of want to just revamp this whole area. When I first started this area, I had all silver and purple and blue and white and it was gorgeous and I loved it so much and then I started adding pinks and stuff like that in um, and I kind of was like I, I didn't love it as much so I think I'm going to take the pinks out and I'm going to go back to the purples and the blues and the silvers and the really cool colors right here because I think it would be really really nice right here is a Chinese fringe flower that I need to prune and I'm not totally sure how to prune this plant, but I'm going to look it up <laughs> and I'll figure it out and I'll update you guys on it. Um, cause I know you want to prune it only at certain times. It's beautiful, but it's obviously super, super happy and it's kind of taking over. So I really want to prune that back. Over here is my problem area. So I have a limelight hydrangea right here. Let me get a little closer. So it's probably chlorosis, right? You can see it's still blooming. It's still going to start blooming. Um, but the whole leaves just have kind of like a yellow tinge to it. And then if you look over here at the star jasmine over here, same thing. Everything just kind of has this kind of yellow tinge to it. I don't see any bug damage or anything like that. I have a feeling I've heard that the years and years and years ago, way before we owned the house, way even before the last owner owned this house, there was redwood trees in this front yard. And I know I can verify that because when I dig, sometimes I find giant like redwood tree roots that I have to kind of cut through. And I found a lot of them right in this area. So I have to look up and I have to see if redwood tree roots affect the nutrient uptake for plants. I have sprayed ironite on this. I think I'm going to have to go a couple steps further and put more, um, I don't know, more nitrogen. I honestly, I have no idea. I'm kind of just guessing at this point. So this is another thing that I need to look up this month and I need to start taking care of it before it really starts affecting these two plants. Cause I love, love these two plants right here. I think they're absolutely perfect. Um, you know, when you put a plant in a spot and you're like, yes, that's, that's what, what needs to be there. That's how I feel about these two plants. This jasmine kind of climbing along this fence and this limelight hydrangea right here. I just, I love it and I want them to thrive. So I need to start taking care of them. Isn't that a pretty view? Gorgeous. Okay. So right here, this big monster of a plant, um, <laughs> this is a vertigo penicetum. I put it in last year. It wintered over. I cut it back and now it's starting to go crazy again. It is obviously very, very happy and it's about to take over for everything. I think I'm going to let it grow this year and then I think I'm going to take it out because there is just, like I said, I have a very small yard and this is a giant, giant plant. <laughs> so I could fit so many smaller plants in there in that spot. I mean, it is going to get like three times the size of this guy right now. Because like I said, it's only May or yeah. Yeah, it's May. So it's only May. So it's just going to get bigger. Um, I do have geraniums all below here. Um, these, I don't even know what varieties they are. They're, I think they're another one that I got off the Lowe's three for 10 deal. Um, but behind here, I do have my sunflowers. Um, <laughs> I'm blanking on the name. I will put the name on the screen. Um, but those are kind of like my bonus uh, plantings for my cut flower garden. So these are all going to be for cut flowers. Um, you guys can kind of see, like look on this side, you can see the star jasmine. It's just not looking good. It's not looking healthy and I'm not sure what's going on. All right, I'll figure it out. Okay, moving over here, I have more of those snow-capped Shasta daisies. Look at that gorgeousness. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. I did do some sneak attack planting and planting a purple hyacinth bean, and I'm gonna wrap it up this pole right here, um, and hopefully the city doesn't mind. It just says road narrows. It's not a stop sign or anything like that. Um, so we'll see how that does. 
And then over here, I have my Eden climbing roses. I'm so sad. I was trying to train it this way. I had a nice long cane and it cracked as I was trying to train it. So now I'm scared to even touch it. And I do have to deadhead some of it over there. So I'm gonna have to work on that. Here's some more plantings that I just took out of my greenhouse before we left. I did a Supertunia Vista bubblegum. And then I think that's a Supertunia Vista Paradise or fuchsia. I don't remember. I think it's a fuchsia. Um, and so these three, I think that they'll all mesh together and they'll be really happy. This is another heliotrope that I got from Annie's Annuals. I thought it died uh, as well in a frost and it has come back to life and is so happy and the pollinators love it and it smells delicious. So I'm very excited about that. Okay, so here is my cottage garden and I need to work on it. It's looking beautiful. It has a lot of color, um, but I kind of just need to clean it up a little bit. It's a little, like I knew it was gonna be messy looking, but it's a little too messy for me. So right here, I have my plumbago that I am training to go up this garden to tour. And I'm really happy with that and I think it looks really good. But I left the other plumbagos in here and they are going crazy. And I actually came in here and I pruned them way back, which means they're not even gonna flower for me. There's one right there. There's one right there. And then there's three more, one, two, three. So I've kind of given up on those. I don't wanna transplant them now because I feel like they will freak out if I try and transplant them now. Um, so I'll just keep them pruned back for the rest of the season. But I think that once they started growing, my question of whether to leave them in or take them out was answered right away and I have to take them out. It's just, it's just too much for them. So I do have some gorgeous lime green Nicotiana. Absolutely beautiful, loving that. Some beautiful Delphiniums, like a fuchsia. It's called Sunny Skies, again from Annie's Annuals. Sorry about the focusing. Here we go. And then right here is a um, False Sem Spirea from Monrovia, which I am loving this plant. It's just kind of like, um, it reminds me of a Japanese maple. And I know that these are kind of crazy and they grow crazy, but I'm planning to keep it, you know, in check and all that kind of stuff. I do have some uh, gladiolas. These are more of the purple and the white ones. And then over here, this is really messy. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to even show this to you guys. Um, I do have my peonies that are doing pretty well. Um, let's see, Shirley Temple looks like it needs some food right there. And then this one, bowl of beauty. And then this one is sorbet right here. Still nothing from the other two that I planted. Um, wait, is this something? No, nothing. That is a plumbago going crazy. Yeah, still nothing there. So yeah, so this one has some work to do. I have some work to do on my fairy garden. Um, and then the last thing I'll show you guys is another <laughs> embarrassment of my front yard. And that is my oak tree bed right here. And this, I just have not addressed. I haven't even touched it. Um, it's just something that, you know, it's just kind of a, like a black hole space for me. It is so far away from everything. It's so far away from the hose, but it is a lot of space, um, that I can use. So if you look, if you look at my fence, my stone fence, if you go straight that way, this is my property and that is the city's property. So, but they, I mean, they never touch it. They never do anything with it. But if they do ever have to come in and they do ever have to do, I don't know, construction or anything like that, I have to be okay with them, you know, digging in this area from here out. And I have to be okay with that. My neighbor next door, I had a discussion with him on what we were going to do, and he kind of gave me the all clear. Of course, I'm going to um, talk to him about what I do, but he kind of gave me the all clear to extend some plantings kind of around over to his side, which I'm really excited about because that gives me this whole area that I can do some really, really good plantings on. Now, this is an oak tree right here, so I am limited on 
what I can plant underneath an oak tree. I know I need to leave a ring. I think, what do they call it? The critical planting area. Um, it's either six to six or 10, I think it's six feet, a ring around the base of the oak tree and I can't plant anything in that ring. Um, just so that I don't disturb the oak tree and then everything else I plant over here, it can't have too much water because obviously if you overwater an oak, it'll, um, it'll suffer, uh, it'll get, I, I don't remember what it gets, but I know it's really bad. I was reading stories about people who planted lawn all the way up to the oak and, you know, a hundred year old oaks died and fell over within a couple years of planting the lawn. So obviously I don't want to do that with this oak. So I have to be really specific about what I choose to plant underneath uh, this oak tree in my oak garden bed, but I think it'll be a fun challenge to see what I can put here and what I can do and what I can kind of extend into his side of the yard. Um, um, he planted a whole bunch of carex right here and he doesn't like the carex right there. He says that it gets weeds in it and it's really hard to pull. So I kind of have free reign to decide what I want to do for this whole bed. So I'm excited about that. Um, again, a little intimidated, but I think it'll be fun. All right, everyone. I think that that is going to be it for this evening simply because I'm out of light. <laughs> the sun went down way quicker than I thought it would. It's really hard trying to time it where you don't have that blazing hot sun and then you can't see because of the shadows and then, you know, the sun's setting. <laughs> so I will get better at that. So I hope you all enjoyed this. It's again, it's just a fun, uh, glimpse in time, you know, month to month, just to see how the garden's doing and to show the progress. And it's so nice to look back and see, you know, what a difference one month has made. So again, I really want to encourage you all to do the same, get your phones out and start taking videos of your own garden. So if you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing and I hope you all have a chance to get into your garden today.